Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the fair use, fair dealings guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Hi everybody and good Tuesday morning. Oh my goodness, lots of stuff to cover again today. Probably going to have to split it into two videos again as well. Just hang in there with me, guys. Let's get busy, shall we? Let's go. To start off with, just to let you know, the king and queen have redone their state visit. Remember, they were going to go to France, but it had to be postponed because of all the protests due to Macron. And um, so anyway, it looks like it's been reset to go ahead next month. Apparently, Charles and Camilla are going to arrive in Paris, and they will be there September 23rd through September 24th. This will be Charles's first visit to Paris as king. All right, we're moving back to the new calm stickers again. Remember, Megan was seen with that thing on her wrist. And of course, the memes have started. Just imagine how many stress stickers the Queen and Prince Philip needed. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, but um, people are coming out with some really good memes like Goo here saying that, um, you know, she always seems to have back grid. What that is actually is a back grid button. So when she needs the dial a pap, she simply hits that little thing on her wrist and it shoots up a signal and backward shows up. <laughs> There's absolutely no end to the fabulous memes that are showing up online and you know, whatever. Now people are saying that she looks really thin and sickly and frail and cold because she might be on Ozempic or one of these other weight loss drugs. You know, that is quite possible. Maybe she is, maybe she isn't, who knows. More importantly, who cares? Some of the squad is coming out saying, well, you know, it's really cold and damp in California in the mornings and all of this. But um, as you can see, some people are in that area and they said it was not wool coat weather. Now, a blind item came out saying that this product placement was not done by accident. And that when she turns the TIG back on, suddenly these things are going to be more expensive, you know. Um, and we're going to discuss turning the TIG back on in just a minute. But here's the interesting part. Newcom has come out and said, we are not working with Meghan Markle. They said, and I'm quoting, we have never sponsored or paid for any product endorsements despite working with over 56 professional teams and hundreds of celebrities. So they didn't sponsor, they, they could have bartered, give me a break, but they're denying this because this is a new startup company. How much do you wanna bet Meghan and Harry have invested in this company? But um, this gets, very interesting because they're claiming they did they're not working with her and yet they put up this post why would you put this up on social media you can see on the top left this came from them why would you put this up offering discounts and free trials with megan's picture on it if you weren't working with her in some fashion because there's no way megan would allow you to merch off of her unless she's getting some sort of money I can only think that maybe they got a lot of backlash from this, and so they're trying to distance themselves like everybody else does. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I agree with this Twitter user. This is free PR by Harry and Megan because she's testing the water before reopening the TIG. Hmm, it's an interesting thought. Well, you guys had a lot of thoughts on all of this. Let's start with this subscriber who pointed out that she went from royal walkabouts in a palace balcony to the back of an office car park pap walk to merch a blue disc. This subscriber pointed out that it is quite pitiful she went from palace to parking lot in five years. How about this subscriber that basically tells Megan that most of us don't have a thousand dollars a month to put a patch on and you wouldn't need it if you weren't out attacking people all the time and trying to destroy family and friends. You know, it's a good way to save money. Now in the middle of all this, thank you to the Royal Rogue, a picture pops up of Megan sitting at a local restaurant eating dinner with there's a, a, somebody on the left and somebody behind her. And of course, immediately the shirt shows up online, but I go with Remoulade sauce. It's the shirt that she wore in Germany when they were there for their pseudo royal tour. But here's what you really have to look at. This is all, okay, so here's look number one. Here's look number two. And here's look 
number three, and these are all within 10 days. Interesting, isn't it? Yep, that's what I think. Now, this restaurant that she was at was called Lucky's. Didn't she say she was vegan? Isn't that what she said? This is a steakhouse. <laughs> so much for vegan. All right, next up, we know that Netflix had to shell out $3 million approximately, that's what they're saying, for the book Meet Me at the Lake. But have you ever heard the article points out any other big name, big budget content creators and producers with Netflix that need this sort of help from the company that they're supposed to be you know, working for? Well, this article says, and I'm quoting, Megan wants to be an award-winning, commercially successful producer, an entrepreneur with a business worth hundreds of millions, a princess slash devoted do-gooder, and a feminist icon, which the article says is something that a seven-year-old would probably jot down in purple pencil when asked what they want to be when they grow up. I completely agree. They're saying that Harry and Meghan don't have the skills, expertise, or contacts to get a TV series made. Therefore, they're probably going to revert back to the mudslinging at the royal family because in the end, their connection to the royal family is all they have to play. That's it. So what it comes down to, the Meet Me at the Lake book with Netflix better do well because what's being said now is that if it fails and their media careers fail, the only thing they're going to have again is their claims of racism against the royal family. The same claims that after they said it all and they went and picked up an award for racism, fighting racism in the royal family, like a week later, they turned around and claimed that they never accused the royals of racism. We guys know that. So, I mean, we all know what's going to happen. If this flops, they're going to go right back to throwing, you know, lobbing things at the royal family. We, we already know. They're one-trick ponies. Now, let me just take you a little bit down memory lane, okay, to the things that Megan said and the things that Harry said in their attempt before the coronation to dial back on their accusations because I think they thought if they dialed back on them, then the royal family would be more likely to acquiesce to all of their demands. Harry, remember, they wanted Archie to have something special. It was his birthday and they wanted a toast and they, you know, blah, blah, blah. So here's a little bit of memory for you concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. What? What? So, um... There is a conversation. Hold up, hold up. There's Stop several right now. There are several conversations There's a about conversation it. with you... With Harry. ...about how dark your baby is going to be? Potentially, and what that would mean or look like. Ooh. And you're not gonna tell me who had the conversation? I think that would be very damaging to them. So that's what Megan said on the Oprah show, which was different, by the way, than what Harry said, but here's what Harry said next. The Oprah interview, you accuse members of your family of racism. You don't even, well, well of- The British press said that. Right. I, did did Megan ever mention that they were they're racist? She said there were troubling comments about yeah, there, there was skin concern color. about his skin color. Right? Wouldn't you describe that as essentially racist? I Truth is, however, it was Megan and Harry who who pulled the race card on Oprah. Here's a little trip down the lane for you. And if a member of his family will comfortably say, we've all had to deal with things that are rude. Rude and racist are not the same. And what I was seeing was history repeating itself, but more perhaps or definitely far more dangerous because then you add race in. Because it's, this was different, you know. It's different because, different because of the race. And the specifics around her race. Concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. Now, don't think that Gail and Oprah didn't want to keep the narrative going because here's what they said like the next day. Attacks on them were different because of race. Now, Valentine Lowe, who we know broke the bullying claims, came out and said, this is what I think is going to happen, okay? So listen to this. Basically, in terms of, you know, accusations against the royal family, they say, Harry and Meghan, they say, we're done. You know, right. we, we've done that. Okay. Uh, so no more revelations, no more... I don't think Bombshells, so. Bombshells, no more accusations. I mean, you know, 
It's not that there won't, won't be any shots, because there, there may be shots in Harry's various court cases, Harry's many court cases, you know, when he will say things about them. But I don't think there'll be a concerted thing like a book or a programme right. or, or a kind of big interview. Mm. I think they've learned that, you know, Meghan's not stupid. I think she knows you, you, you've got to do something positive now. You can't carry on harking on that same negative message. So, next up, we know that the anniversary of the Queen's death is coming, and we know that the Prince and Princess of Wales are going to lead tributes to her on the first anniversary. And people are saying Harry and Meghan are going to totally take away because gosh knows what they're going to do with their public message, <clears throat> excuse me, honoring the Queen. Personally, as much grief that Harry caused the queen in her final days. I mean, if he loved her so much, if that was his beloved grandmother so much, how come when he knew she was dying of bone cancer and he asked her to come visit for the last time, he refused? Why would he do that? And now he wants to honor her. He had his chance. He blew it. All right, you guys, that's the end of the information for video number one. Come on over and join me for video number two.